y'all, Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about the Continental Divide Trail, also known as the CDT. As many of you know, I'm aiming to through hike the CDT this year in hopes of completing my Triple Crown journey, which includes hiking the AT, the PCT, and the CDT. So I've had people in the comments section asking questions about the CDT, and you know, a lot of folks don't know a whole lot about it because it's not as popular as, say, the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail. So today I wanna to cover those questions for y'all as like an intro into the next chapter of this channel, which is going to be the CDT and my journey on it because I plan to document it like I did the PCT and the AT. So to start with, where is the CDT? Well, the CDT spans 3,100 miles from Mexico to Canada across the Continental Divide, and it passes through New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, a little bit of Idaho, and then through Montana. Are the CDNST and CDT the same thing? So CDNST is Continental Divide National Scenic Trail, and then CDT is Continental Divide Trail. Basically, I think people just use CDT to shorten CDNST, just like the Pacific Crest Trail is actually the Pacific Crest National Scenic Trail. From doing some research, I think where the confusion on this comes in, especially with the CDT, is that the United States Forest Service has like one route mapped out for the CDT NST, um, but the thing is, a lot of the trail is not complete in that like there isn't a specific route in some parts. Some parts are bushwhacking from what I'm told or maybe walking dirt roads, forest roads. There are a lot of alternate routes. And so I think that because most people end up not actually on the CDNST as it is specifically mapped out because there isn't really an established trail the whole way. And I think the CDT is more of a like design your own adventure trail. So I looked into the requirements of being a 3000 miler according to the Continental Divide Trail Coalition. And they said to be a 3000 miler that issues of sequence, direction, speed, length of time, or substitutes of the official route are not considered. And the website also states that basically the CDTC by the honor system, the people who apply should have completed the trail from Mexico to Canada along the Continental Divide. So it's not so much that it has to be along this one mapped out route uh, as much as like more of a corridor mentality that you finish the steps from Mexico to Canada on the Continental Divide. How many miles are in each state? New Mexico has 775 miles, Colorado has 800 miles, Wyoming has 550 miles, and then through Idaho and Montana, there are about 980 miles. Where does the CDT start and end? The Southern Terminus is located in New Mexico at the border of Mexico, and it's called Crazy, I think Crazy Kook Monument. Uh, it's spelled Cook, Crazy Cook Monument. But I've heard rumor of somebody was murdered there back in the day, so that's why they call it Crazy Kook. I guess. Then the official northern terminus is up in Glacier Waterton Lake National Park right there on the U.S. and Canada border. Now just like with a bunch of alternates to the trail, there actually are alternate southern and northern termini, uh, but from what I understand those are the official ones and those are the ones that I plan to start and finish at. When do people typically start a CDT through hack? Well if you're going northbound, then people generally start mid-April to early May. And if you're going southbound, people usually start about mid-June to early July. Do you have to have a permit to hike the CDT? So the answer to this one is yes and no. There is no specific permit for the CDT like there is the PCT. So it's not like you apply for a permit, select a certain date, and you have to start you know, on a certain set date. Instead, uh, you can start pretty much whenever you want, but when you get to say, Glacier National Park or Yellowstone National Park or some of the wilderness areas. And then if you take, there's an alternate that goes through Rocky Mountain National Park. For those specific areas, you might have to have a permit, but there's no like one permit that covers from Mexico to Canada. As far as navigation goes, what maps or apps can be used to navigate the CDT? There are several apps that can be used. The one that I aim to use is Gut Hooks. Another popular one is HikerBot. Uh, there may be several others. I also plan to get the Lay Maps. So a guy named Jonathan Lay created maps for the CDT when he hiked several years ago. And I've heard that a lot of CDT through hikers tend to use a balance somewhere between the Lay Maps and Gut Hooks because I guess Gut Hooks isn't as accurate from what I've heard on the CDT as like the PCT and the AT. You can print out those lay maps or there are other paper maps available. Um, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to carry paper maps or not. Probably through the San Juans, I'll try to have some paper maps and maybe a compass to you know rely on those skills if I need to as a backup. But for the most part, I'm probably gonna use my smartphone to um, navigate using the lay maps and gut hooks. The CDTC recommends having two different 
avenues of navigation. So if you're going to use your smartphone, they recommend either having two smartphones in case one breaks or is lost or having an app on your smartphone and then also having the paper maps as backup. I also plan to have an in reach uh, just so I can communicate with people or call for help if I need to, but hopefully that won't be an issue. How difficult is it to find the trail or to navigate through the CDT? Well, the answer is, I don't know, because I haven't been out there yet. I've heard that there are some areas where you've got trail and then suddenly it becomes a bunch of brush that's not maintained or you know you might have to figure out ways to get around certain things by using dirt roads, forest roads. Uh, but the truth is, I don't really know because I haven't been out there and seen it for myself, but I will let y'all know whenever I get finished. Are there grizzlies on the CDT? And if so, what do you plan to do about them? Yes, there is a chance that I could run into grizzlies in Yellowstone or Glacier. Uh, hoping kind of to see one just because I think it would be cool but maybe at a very far distance uh, but then the other part of me is like you know I just I don't really want to see one but um, as long as I could see one and know that it wasn't going to eat me I think I'd, I'd be cool with that. As far as what I plan to do about them I'm definitely going to be dotting my I's and crossing my T's at camp in grizzly country and you know, I'm going to make sure that I'm cooking in a separate area than I am sleeping that I am hanging my bear bag um, I don't plan to carry a bear canister the whole way and honestly I'm not going to carry a bear canister unless I'm in an area that requires that uh, but you know otherwise yes I will be making sure that um, I do everything I need to to prevent bears being in my camp at all costs and then I likely will carry bear spray when I'm up in grizzly country. Will you have to rely on packages for resupply? I think the best answer for this is maybe. As far as I know up in like Montana and Wyoming um, even though the towns that you go into are more remote and probably smaller than, you know, say the other trails, uh, I think that there will be options for buying food. There will be grocery stores or gas stations. Um, in New Mexico and going up into southern Colorado, I don't really know what to expect. Um, I think the first few towns I come across will have some kind of selection. So I think that there will probably be a mixture um, just because these towns will be smaller. I'll probably have my mom mail me more things than she did say on the AT or PCT. But I assure you that when I get done with the trail, I will definitely list out places that I would recommend getting a resupply box. You'll definitely be on the road less traveled. What are your plans for dealing with the extended solitude and isolation? Honestly, I think that I will probably just focus more on capturing the critters and the beauty of nature and you know if it kind of starts to get to me a little bit just knowing how isolated and how far away from civilization I am you know I will know people on the trail um, no I won't see them every moment but uh, if nothing else I've got podcasts I've got audiobooks and I make a point uh, to keep in only one earbud. So if any of you like to listen to music and podcasts, I definitely recommend only putting in one earbud. That way you can hear, you know, bears or snakes or anything else, people around you. Is Perk going on the CDT too? Yes. So Perk is going to come down from New York, grab me up here in Alabama, and then we're going to road trip out to the CDT. And there are actually two other people starting with us, but uh, you'll have to watch to see who those folks are. And they're not from like the original AT Tramley or anybody on the PCT. Is Mayor going northbound with you? Unfortunately, no. His little dog, Katana, she lost one of her eyes while they were on the PCT together due to glaucoma. So I guess Shiba Inus, that's like a common thing for them. Um, so the one eye that she has left is actually starting to go blind now too. And there's a potential that she'll have to have surgery to have it removed. So there just wasn't enough time to kind of see how that was going to go. Also, he's working on his book that he's writing about the PCT. So he wants a little bit more time to get that done. And, you know, he didn't get to complete his southbound trip last year. So um, I think he's got like a personal thing against, you know, he's got a beat going Sobo. So if he is out on the CDT this year, it'll likely be Sobo. Are you carrying the same gear as on the PCT? So some of it might be the same, some of it might be a little different, but I am gonna put out a CDT gear video before I get started. So y'all can probably look out for that next week. Will you need an ice axe or micro spikes slash crampons? I'll probably take an ice axe and my micro spikes into the San Juans. They worked well for me last year in the Sierra Nevada while on the PCT. So um, I like having that extra weight and extra comfort and I think it's definitely worth it in snowy slash icy terrain. So because I don't really know what to expect, I'll probably tote them. Then after that, I'm not really sure. I'll just kind of play it by ear and see what the weather's doing or if there's still snowpack around in areas that I'll be. What areas on the CDT are of concern weather-wise and will you need any extra gear from what you carried on the PCT or AT? So as far as I can tell, the CDT is gonna be pretty exposed um, I think that being at high elevations will be a little sketchy with thunderstorms and lightning. As far as any additional gear, I don't 
think that that'll really be necessary. I might go with a uh, colder rated sleeping bag, uh, maybe a five degree sleeping bag in the higher elevations. Um, but to start out with, not really gonna be carrying anything that I wasn't say on the PCT in the desert. And then for the San Juans, I'm probably gonna have um, the same stuff that I did on the PCT in the Sierra Nevada, except I might go with a little bit warmer clothing or sleeping bag. How will the CDT relate to the PCT or the AT? Well, isn't that just the question of the year? So uh, I think, you know, in the idea of it's a through hack, it's gonna be pretty similar. However, um, I think that like the PCT, I'm gonna go through a desertous area and then, you know, higher elevations with snow um, in the San Juans like the Sierra Nevada. But I think that the elevation change, like the up and the down will be more closely related to the AT, um, just like without the green tunnel. So it's almost gonna be like the worst of the two trails combined. <laughs> but I think that because it's gonna be more remote, that it'll be more interesting in the way of wildlife and critters. I think that I'll see a lot more of that. While I think it will be similar in certain ways to the AT and PCT, I think it's gonna be an adventure of its own. But just looking at the different mileages and the total elevation gain and loss. So the Appalachian Trail is 2,189 miles approximately with an elevation gain and loss at a total of 515,000 feet. The PCT is 2,650 miles approximately and the elevation gain and loss on that one is 315,000 so that's 200,000 feet difference and finally the CDT is at 3,100 miles approximately and the total elevation gain and loss is at 400,000 feet and also as I mentioned before I think that one noticeable thing about the CDT will be probably the lack of establishment. You know, I don't know because I haven't been out there, but the AT and the PCT were designated under the National Scenic Trails Act back in 1968, while the CDT wasn't designated until 10 years later in 1978. So to be fair, the CDT is a newer trail and that is to be expected. What are you looking forward to most as sites to see along the CDT? I think the thing that I'm looking forward to the most is the Wind River Range. I've just heard how beautiful it is and that it's like a live-in postcard. So, and then also the fact that I'm gonna be going through Colorado because when I decided to quit my job and just said, done with the rat race, I was in Colorado at the time I was living there and you know I quit and headed to Alabama to prepare to hike the AT. And so it's just kind of neat to be going back through there on what's you know hopefully the final leg of my triple crown. Are you nervous and or excited? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, I did a video on this before you know is it normal to be nervous before a through hike and I think that yes uh, I think if you're not then you don't have that sense of self-preservation and that's probably a problem. Um, I am less nervous probably and just just at the idea of going on a through hike or you know a long distance backpacking trip because you know I know how to cover my bases of shelter water food you know all the necessities um, but now that I have more time invested in this triple crown journey it is a little unnerving to think like what if I don't complete it like what if I'm not successful I just have to tell myself you know have a little faith in yourself and I know I can do this and just get out there and do the best you can and and I think that that's the most important thing is just believing in yourself and going for it because if you fail then you know at least you tried and you had something worth something to, to fail at I think that one of the hardest things about leaving though and that that makes me sad and nervous too is leaving my dog children I know that sounds ridiculous but you know, my dog son Hank is 11 now, and uh, when I lost Sugar while I was on the Appalachian Trail, some of you may remember who are following then, um, you know, she passed away while I was out on trail, and I was actually rushing back to try to get home to see her because she was sick. And uh, so he's at that age now, so that makes me a little nervous too. Um, I mean, he's had a good laugh and everything, but you just don't want anything to ever happen like that while you're gone on a trek like this. Have you prepared differently for the CDT than the AT or PCT? I would probably say I've been more lax this time, which might not be good. Um, but like I said before, you know, once you've done it, you just kind of have to adjust to the different terrain or um, weather or what, you know, whatever you plan to encounter. It's the same idea of getting out there, sleeping in your tent, waking up and walking and kind of doing it on repeat. What is the highest point on the CDT? The high point of the CDT is at Gray's Peak in Colorado and it's at 14,270 feet. What have you done to train physically for the CDT? The answer would be pretty much nothing. I've been trying to eat, you know, relatively healthy since I've been home. 
Um, I generally do that when I'm off trail, but as far as like training or working out a lot, I worked out when I first got home a little bit, but in the last couple months, I really haven't done anything. Um, but I'm fairly active. I'm not, you know, a person who sits down and watches a lot of TV or anything like that. So I think the main thing will be taking it slow, taking it easy. Luckily, New Mexico to start with is relatively flat. All right, y'all. Well, those are the most common questions I've received so far about my upcoming through hack of the CDT. If y'all have any other questions, feel free to comment those below. Now I am in the preparation stages, so I'm kind of like, ah, going crazy, running around like a headless chicken. Um, so if I don't get to them right away, uh, don't be upset with me, but I will try to get to those and, and get y'all some answers that you might be wondering. Like I said before, stay tuned for my CDT gear video if you wanna see exactly what I'm carrying as I start out. And I will probably end up splitting those into sections of the trail, you know, when I have to adjust my gear for different terrain. If you'd like to support this channel or help support my through hike, you can do so by doing your Amazon shopping at dixieaz.com. So you just go there, click the link that takes you to Amazon. And because you're shopping through my link, it'll help support the work I do at no additional cost to you. Thank y'all so much for watching and we will see y'all next time.